coming up. It's seven o'clock, and uh, the tradition with the uh, county commission is that we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so good evening. Uh, my name is Joel Ahrens. I serve on the uh, Lincoln County Commission. I represent District 1, which is uh, Southern Sioux Falls and Harrisburg. And I've been appointed as a co-chair to this committee. And my other co-chair is Commissioner Jim Schmidt, who's also with us tonight. Thank you. And Jim also volunteered to serve on the committee. So I appreciate that. Uh, I think first things first, before we go into the business of the committee and some of those things, we're going to introduce ourselves. So um, I will start to my right, your left. Good evening. I'm Judge Rachel Rasmussen. I am the circuit court judge who is sitting in for Amy Lee on this whole time. Uh, the other judges in the Second Judicial Circuit. So other ones rotate here and there, but you guys have me full time down here. Hi, my name is Robin Hellman. I'm the presiding judge for the Second Judicial Circuit, which is comprised of Minnehaha and Lincoln Counties. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Jim Schmidt, Lincoln County Commissioner. Betty Otten, private citizen T. Chad Skiles, uh, private citizen from Canton, political watchdog. Paul Paulson, um, I'm from South End Sioux Falls. Yeah, thank you, Steve, for rounding out the group. Uh, so just so everybody knows, our meetings will be uh, live streamed. So we've got the camera in the front of the room here and in the back of the room. And so for those in the general public, whether you're in Sioux Falls or Australia, for that matter, you can participate in, in these hearings, uh, uh, at least by watching and listening to them. And that provides the public with the ability to uh, figure out how our meeting is going, what we're talking about, and whether or not uh, uh, they want to participate or not. These meetings are also open to the public who wants to come in and watch or listen. And we're going to provide a public comment period uh, at the end of each meeting. So uh, any participants uh, who are members and or the public can come in and uh, make a make a brief comment about what they think about the courthouse improvement issues. And uh, I think what that means is Lincoln County is committed to transparency and accountability and allowing people the opportunity to say their piece. So we've got a great uh, diversity of both leaders and geography on the committee. And so uh, I guess before we go on to the next uh, agenda item, which is we're actually going to get out of these seats and go tour the courthouse. We're going to go into those places in the courthouse here where maybe sometimes the public is not allowed to go. So to be somewhat behind the scenes tour, uh, we'll go all the way from the basement to the, to the top, uh, which includes the attic. There is a, uh, I guess, a cautionary note that we want to give to everyone before they make a decision for themselves whether to go into the attic. And I'll let uh, Bill Golden, our uh, representative from the state's attorney's office, discuss that. And I just want to say that Larry Nelson is listening on the live stream. He had called me earlier to let everybody know that he's here. And on the tour, I'll have him on my cell phone so he can follow along and listen. Uh, we had a air quality report that was done here on July 23rd, 2020, so it's available for anyone who'd like it. 
the attic on the east end and the west end, the safe range for a mold that was between 1,000 and 4,000. Up there it was measured at 13,000. So it's well above what they recommend for safe levels for mold and allergies and so forth. So if you have respiratory issues or allergies or you might think that you might be susceptible to it, we just want you to know that if you're gonna to decide to go up there, um, it is in a very high level for mold and other particulates up there. Uh, that included the bats that were present at the time. So we just wanna make everybody aware of it so that you're aware of what you're going into and you can make your own choice if you wish to go up into the attic. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I also, before we get started in earnest as well, I want to thank uh, the building staff and uh, John Rombo, who's our buildings and ma maintenance supervisor, for not only agreeing to serve on the committee, but making the building available for us tonight to tour. I want to thank Sherry Lund, our auditor, for setting the room up today and going the extra mile to make sure that the video system is going to be set up. And then I want to thank Sheriff's Office as well for providing some security for the building and, and uh, doing what they do. Uh, there are some uh, ground rules that we are going to ask uh, for tonight. Um, this is not technically considered uh, a, uh, uh, how do I want to say it, Bill, a public meeting per se in the sense that we have to follow certain specific state guidelines for open meetings. However, uh, because we've committed to being open, uh, you know, the meeting is going to be live streamed and anybody who wants to come in can participate. But there's not actually a quorum of county commissioners here. No county commission business is being decided tonight. The judges are not deciding any cases. This is simply a fact-finding body who uh, hopefully we get all the facts on the table during uh, the meetings that we have here. And then uh, we start to draw some conclusions or a series of conclusions from the facts that we discover. And with that, I guess, does anybody else want to make some kind of, because if you let me go, I'll talk forever. <laughs> so does anybody else have something to say before we get going? Jim? No, I, I would just like to echo the fact that um, this is very serious business. And there's certainly been a lot of discussion amongst uh, the citizenry about the future of the courthouse, what it's going to happen, where it's going to be. We've had a lot of false information presented. So thanks to uh, Commissioner Ahrens and uh, decided that we should have uh, settled this fact once and for all. So the point, whole purpose of this is to completely evaluate the future of that particular edifice and at the same time, look at the future needs that we have as a county to provide adequate uh, courtroom space and, and uh, good working conditions for workers, but not only for our own staff, but also for the, for the judicial uh, individuals as well. So it's a pretty serious business. We're going to decide the future on what we're going to do and where we're going to go. So I just want to emphasize that. And I, too, want to thank everybody for coming and showing those interests. So, Mr. Joel. Okay, with that, with that said, before we get too hot and heavy into the business of the committee, we want to make sure that everybody has a, what we call in the military, a common operating picture. It means we're all operating, hopefully, with the same information. We've all looked at the same place. We've all seen the same room. We've looked at the attic. We've looked at the basement. That's why we're gonna provide a tour, and then that's also why the folks from ARC Inc. are gonna provide us with a presentation tonight. They're gonna to feed to us all the same information that the county commissioners, the judges, what have you, would have. And uh, so we're hoping to put everybody that's on the committee, especially those who may not have as much experience with the courthouse as others, to get them up to speed and give them, create a common operating picture that we can operate off of for future discussion. So with that, what I would say is, John? I want to add one more thing real quick. Uh, so uh, those of you that don't know, the, the courthouse is two elements. We have the newer addition that was built back in, what, 2013? And before that, we have the older courthouse. Um, a lot of the focus right now is on the older courthouse. That's where mostly the court's staffing is held. 
court services over there. The newer courthouse is mostly admin. Um, I guess I'm not sure. Are we touring both sections? Or are we? We're doing the we're doing the 50 cent tour tonight. The whole thing. Okay. So uh, so that's I'll break it up and we'll just kind of do a circle of the whole basement and go up. But we'll probably not go into any individual rooms. We'll just see the suite as a whole okay when we're in the admin side yeah and then i did talk to sheriff swenson please correct me if i'm wrong he will allow some access correct into the uh sheriff's office or not what did we decide on that yeah we can go through the same okay and with that we usually do it in smaller groups you know we're going to evidence obviously right individual officers but the main main thing is we're going to have to split the yeah, and I mean, look, if somebody really has a burning desire to see a specific office, we'll make a decision right there on this. You know, there's, you know, we, we can get you into one specific place if you really need to see it in order to help make a decision or to determine how to best do your job here. But for the most part, you know, we'll stay out of the individual offices. All right. Well, if we're ready. Okay. So, uh, uh, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, watching the, uh, uh, who were previously watching us on the live stream, just so you know what we were doing for the last hour and a half about, is we toured the courthouse from top to bottom. Uh, every, all of the uh, people on the committee were able to see uh, every location they wanted to. They got the behind the scenes tour, if you will, uh, both in the old courthouse side and the new courthouse side. And uh, they were able to uh, turn over every stone they wanted to and take a peek at everything. And we could certainly make arrangements if uh, folks want a more in-depth tour of a specific place. And we can do that as a uh, kind of a side trip uh, uh, if any of the committee members want to want to get a more in-depth look at a specific area in the future. But what we want to turn our attention to now is uh, Andrew, and I don't want to say your last name wrong. How do I pronounce it? Etrum. Etrum. We have Andrew Etrum from Architecture Incorporated. Uh, they are the uh, company that the Lincoln County Commission contracted with in order to do both a uh, structural analysis um, and uh, uh, to do a needs assessment as well. We're not quite at the phase in these proceedings where we can start talking about the needs assessment, but I'm not gonna micromanage Andrew's presentation, of course. But just so people know where we're at, structural assessments of the building have been done, and now they're phasing into a needs assessment. and just so people know uh you know you've got multiple customers at the courthouse here multiple users you've got the staff uh, you've got the general public uh, you've got law enforcement uh, you've got the people who work here you know so you've got major subgroups that use these buildings to varying degrees and uh i think andrew can get into that a little more tonight but uh, i'll turn the floor over to him Thanks, Joel. Um, I will, I've got quite a bit of information to go through. I'm going to flip through it relatively quickly. Everyone should have gotten somewhat familiar with the building, with the tour. Uh, if there's questions as I'm going through this, please interrupt and I'm happy to address as I, as I can. Uh, otherwise, I'll just roll through the information that we've got uh, tonight. The goal uh, of our presentation was to supplement the tour and start to give this group a kind of a baseline of understanding of, of where we're at and where we're headed and, and the, the things that have been discussed to this point and some of the, some of the preliminary results of those things. So agenda, I'm, I'm gonna quickly touch on what, what uh, Commissioner Ahrens was just talking about, the, the process that we're going through do a very quick overview of the complex, uh, review the results of the, the courthouse building exterior assessment that we uh, completed, 
and then review preliminary results of the courthouse building uh, space needs assessment. So process, uh, we, were, we were hired uh, last fall and performed a, an exterior assessment of the original courthouse structure. Uh, that report was finalized and presented to the commission in October of last year. Uh, following the completion of that assessment, we were also then contracted uh, to do a, what we call a space needs assessment uh, focused on the, on the courts system and, and really the, the original courthouse structure. Uh, and then also, uh, we, we just uh, submitted a proposal and were given notice to proceed to do the same uh, space needs assessment for the, ad, the administration side of the, of the courthouse building as well. So the, the exterior assessment's complete, one's in progress and one's just about to get started. So courthouse complex, uh, here is, is the piece of property. It's just shy of two acres. There's about 83,000 square feet of, of building space between the admin addition and the original courthouse building. So obviously original courthouse sitting on the south uh, facing the main street uh, and then the administration addition off to the north. And then the county does, just, just for um, informational purpose, the county owns this piece of property uh, across the street as well. So the original courthouse building constructed in 1888 and then added on to in 1899. And then there was a third addition, I believe in the 1940s, which added some storage and, and vault uh, on the northeast side. So it's three stories in a basement and approximately 21,000 square feet of finished space. So it currently houses courts, court services, clerk of courts, and some other miscellaneous functions. The administration addition was completed in 2008. Again, three stories and a basement. The third story on, on this addition is, is really just the link and the mechanical space. Uh, and that building is about 62,000 square feet of enclosed space. So currently houses the, the county administration, county commission, state's attorney, sheriff, courtroom 2B. So like I mentioned, uh, the exterior assessment that we uh, completed last fall, we looked at, at three major components. Uh, structurally, we had a structural engineer uh, on our team. We looked at the, the foundation and the roof structure of the building. There was some concerns of some uh, visible uh, rot in some of the roof uh, members. And so we, we uh, did an assessment on the, the structure. Uh, we looked at mechanical systems. Uh, so we had a mechanical engineer on our team as well. The things that John mentioned, and he, and he kind of hit on this uh, in lots of different spaces in that existing or the original building uh, as we were touring is, you know, the desire is to, to figure out a, a solution on the mechanical system to improve the ability to, to control the temperature in the building and to, to also improve the ventilation and air quality in the building. And the last part of that was, was the scope that our office, our firm was responsible for. We looked at the physical condition of the exterior walls and roofs and, and or walls and roof and openings. So kind of the results of that, that study um, was uh, the estimated construction cost for correcting and implementing all of the things that were suggested by the mechanical engineer was around 715,000. Uh, the architectural and structural items were about 375,000. And then we were also asked um, to give a quick look at interior finishes. So this number is uh, no physical remodeling of spaces, but just updating the walls, ceilings, uh, flooring, et cetera. So this, this was a number that, that John requested that we uh, put some thought to, and, and so that was the result. So all told, the results of that study was about $1.6 million uh, to, to incorporate the work uh, that we were recommending. So the goal of that was to um, 
to address some of the concerns uh, structurally with, with people seeing the, the rot and other things in, in, the, in the attic space to address those mechanical needs, and then really to add longevity to the structure by addressing some of the, the uh, maintenance and repair items on the exterior walls and roof, et cetera. Any questions on this so far? May I ask, the 1.6, does that include updating the, the heating, the boiler, all that kind of stuff? Yes, that's so okay. the 715,000 okay. is, is, is the, the updates that we were recommending for the mechanical systems of the building. Which address the, <clears throat> what, the heating and air conditioning improvement in the old courthouse. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because we had one unit to do that, and now we're going to talk about additional. Correct. So uh, if, if I'm just up from, from uh, memory, the solution on the mechanical system was to uh, provide a fresh air unit. Uh, right now there's not outside fresh air that's brought into the building. Uh, so this would this unit wouldn't necessarily heat and cool the spaces, but it would bring fresh air into the spaces for air quality. Uh, it would tie the system. We'd abandon the steam boiler and we tie onto the hot water boiler system uh, in the in the new structure, uh, and then we'd address all of the individual small spaces and the units in those spaces. So it was a it was a pretty thorough uh, update of the mechanical systems, um, just for history and background, some of this stuff was contemplated back when we did the project in 2008, you know, for budgetary reasons, uh, the improvements to the mechanical system on the existing courthouse structure uh, didn't make the cut back then. There's no electrical work done there that wasn't looked at? So we didn't look at, we did not look at electrical other than the electrical needed to uh, do the mechanical. So if there were power and data issues, no, that wasn't addressed as far as I know. Um, I'd, I'd have to double check numbers. I, I, I'd, I'd just have to double check. The, the, the primary focus was mechanical systems and electrical work uh, related to those mechanical upgrades. Other questions? So the next, uh, the next phase that we started was looking at the, the original courthouse structure. Uh, and, and the first uh, part of that process is just defining sort of who owns what space in the building. And so then we could quantify all of the different uh, groups that are in that, that structure. How many square feet do they currently occupy? So uh, we worked with, with John and others to, to make sure we had uh, basically the assignment of space correct for the different groups and then we've got that quantified in a spreadsheet uh, and that's what we used uh, in the conversations with with the users to then look at here's what you have now here's the proposed future square footage so we've got the colored floor plans of uh, of those the basement first second you'll see the, the courtroom over in the admin and then third floor so that's what we used as a as a as a basis for the conversations uh, going ahead. So now to, to quantify these things and, and the rest of this uh, presentation, we'll talk more about the, the numbers, uh, the information to, to again give that baseline of understanding of, of what we're dealing with. So if we look at um, all of the floors, uh, the basement through third floor and including the, the, the portion of the admin building that the courts utilizes. The court system is currently occupying about 14,000 square feet. So that is, that is net square footage. And so what I mean by net square footage is it's the, it's the area inside the rooms. So this does not account for uh, corridors or thickness of walls or those things which we would call gross square footage. So this is just the net usable square feet if that term makes sense to everybody. Okay, so there's about 14,000 square feet net usable square footage. Now, 3,900 of that is over in the uh, courtroom 2B in the admin building. So we had, uh, back in November, we had initial meetings. We had, we had two separate meetings 
uh, the first with, with Judge Hellman and Judge Rasmussen, uh, Tom Woolman, Bill Golden, and Carl uh, talking about the court side. And then the second with Sheriff Swenson and others talking about uh, how, the, how the sheriff uh, supports and integrates with the court system and, and their duties or roles uh, related to courts. And so out of those meetings, uh, we have started to um, document and quantify uh, the things that they told us and turn those into square foot numbers so that we can understand how much square footage are we short from uh, based on the, the current uh, needs of, of the different groups. So our initial conclusions from those discussions and, and some uh, discussions following those, uh, really there's two sets of deficiencies. There's, there's functional deficiencies that were pointed out as we were, as we were walking around on the tour, the safety and security, technology, acoustics, adjacencies, things like that. And then there are space deficiencies and those are either the rooms aren't big enough to uh, meet the needs. That was the discussion in, in courtroom 2A or there are, th there are things that are needed that aren't, aren't there at all. Uh, Sally Port or, or other uh, functional spaces. So deficiencies, looking at the, at the courtrooms and, and the support spaces with the courtrooms, currently there are the two large courtrooms, 2B and 3A, and the one small courtroom, uh, 2A. And what we heard is, is the needs, the current needs are to have three courtrooms the size of 2A, or excuse me, 2B or 3A, and then two smaller courtrooms that are larger than 2A so that they're functional. So we have, the numbers that we've plugged in uh, are accommodating those five courtrooms in total. Uh, judges' chambers, court reporters' offices, jury deliberation rooms, et cetera. And so the total, the total net additional square footage relative to the square footage that those spaces currently occupy is 7,000 square feet. Okay, does that make sense? So the total net gain, the net additional square footage that is needed to satisfy the requirements that we were told is 7,000 square feet more than those spaces occupy now. So the solution, whether that solution is all new courtrooms, reusing courtrooms, it doesn't matter, the, the net gain, the net extra space that's needed is 7,000 square feet. And is that based on what our current caseload and volume is now or projected one that you discussed? So, right, the, the, the initial numbers that we ran with were the five total courtrooms three large and two small. So that sixth one that, that is in the not too distant future, you know, that's not in this number. So these numbers are, I would, I would call these in progress. Um, we've had the meetings, we got more information from Carl. Uh, we just need to schedule another meeting in the not too distant future, show you the numbers behind all of this and make sure that they're accurate. I, they're, they should be very close, uh, but it would just be the, the final confirmation that, that we're understanding things and quantifying them correctly. So next, uh, Clerk of Courts. Uh, this is all based on the information that, that Carl provided. So the current staff of five, really the current need is more like 8.1, uh, but future growth is somewhere in the 10 to 14 or 15 uh, within the next five to 10 years. And so based, again, not, not suggesting where this square footage is or what the arrangement is, but just the, the net add, we think is about 1,000 to 1,500 square feet for clerk of courts. Court services, current staff of three, future growth to, to up to five in 10 years. And so we had growth of about 1,000 square feet for court services. And public defenders, uh, that's, that's one that I, that I want to reaffirm. Uh, but right now we've got plugged in an extra 500 square feet for public defenders. Is that not on? 
Um, okay. Is, is that thousand square feet that you just talked about for court service employees? Is that in addition to the seven thousand that you're talking correct? About? Correct. Yep. Okay. So I'll, we've got totals at the end here that I can walk through. Okay. Uh, okay, so the, the last um, piece of the puzzle on the, the deficiencies was the safety and security uh, piece that we had discussions with, with both of those uh, two groups and those two initial meetings that we had. Um, some, some ability to do courtroom monitoring uh, through a camera system and having, having some uh, home base as far as that, the, court, the monitoring and the security of, of the courtrooms. Sally port and, and parking for judges, uh, holding rooms so that there's not the issue uh, that was described when we were up in, in courtroom 3A of all of the inmates sitting there for the whole day. There, there'd be creating of, of some holding rooms where uh, that process could be managed much differently than it is. There's talk of additional or, or moving 24 seven monitoring. And so all of those numbers added up to uh, 5,500 square feet. Now these are, this is net gain again, but all of these spaces really aren't, aren't currently uh, part of the facility. So these were all sort of new uh, functions that were, that we understood were required uh, for various reasons. So when we add up all of those numbers, 7,000 square feet, 1,500 for clerk of courts, 1,000 for court services, 500 for public defenders and 5,500 square feet uh, for, for under the safety and security heading, our total deficiency is 15,500 net square feet. So there is, back to the beginning, there's 14,000 net square feet that's occupied by the court system today. And based on the conversations we had and the, and the numbers that still need to be confirmed, we believe that somewhere in the 15,500 net square feet of additional space beyond what is currently occupied. So at that point, what we're saying is then the total space needs for the courts is more like 29,500, the 14 that they have now, plus the extra 15,500 that was described in the meetings that we talk through. Lots of numbers in a relatively short order, but does that, are there questions or things that people would like to be described in additional detail? In very simplified terms, basically we're looking at needing to double. Am I Correct. reading all those numbers correctly? Correct. Okay. Yeah. 14 existing, 15.5 new, okay. basically double. Now that here's where this gets, here's where the conversation about net square footage and gross square footage gets a little confusing. And I wanted to, I wanted to present it this way to try and make it as easy to understand and as apples to apples as possible. And so I'll give you a, a really quick example and try not to lose everybody. So if one of the solutions were to continue to utilize the existing courthouse building but to add on to that building, the addition that we're building is not 15,500. It's that 15,500 plus a multiplier to get it to gross square footage. Because the 15,500 doesn't have mechanical space, it doesn't have the thickness of walls, it doesn't have corridors, et cetera. So a rule of thumb is somewhere in the 30 to 35% multiplier to get from a net to a gross. So again, if this is, this is just the assumption or just to try and make the point, if the existing courthouse were to be, continue to be utilized and we were adding on, we'd build 15,500 times 1 1.3 or 1.35, which is you know, low 20,000s for, for square footage. Now, that's the math side then there's the design side where we look to see where does it fit, how efficiently can we connect to the existing building. There's all kinds of other factors that would push that 20, 20 to 22,000 square foot number up or down. 
but that's just the, the raw number. So it's, it's, the idea isn't it's a 15,500 square foot addition, it's more like 20 or 22. Does that make sense, hopefully? Has a drug rehab program phase been discussed at all for recidivism for drugs? It was not discussed in any of the conversations we had. So there is already built into the system. We are just very limited down here. I think Jim Coblin was pointing out how court services, a lot of people are going to many lockdowns for their services that have been down here. So some of it is we have limited space and ability, but we do do a lot of drug intervention and attempts to go ahead and keep people sober so that we don't have a mess in the system. And Betty? We're going to be bringing in uh, all of throughout this entire process, because obviously there's more meetings than just tonight. We're going to be bringing in all of the users, bringing in the sheriff, bringing in the auditor, bringing in UJS, you know, and they're going to tell us what their needs are and why they have the needs that they do. And then each of us will get the opportunity to say, hey, sheriff, did you think about this? Or court system, did you think about this? In future meetings, we are going to get into the nitty-gritty details of justifying or quantifying the needs assessment. So that is all I had prepared to discuss. I'm happy to, if there's more questions or things that I can run through. Happy to do so. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, no uh, does anybody have any other questions right now for Andrew? And I assume, you know, these guys will make themselves available offline yeah. too if they, if they need to. Are we going to get a copy of this? Yeah, we can uh, make a PDF of this. And, and I think our intent, Betty, is everything that gets presented to this committee is going to get its own. We're going to have our own courthouse improvement webpage. And then every time a presentation like this is made and supporting documents, we're going to hang them inside there, and then they'll get posted inside there. Because it was all, these are all the materials that the public wants to see in order to find out what we're doing, what we're talking about, and why we're doing it. So we'll hang all that in there. Anything else? Andrew, just for the purposes of, because we're going to have a little discussion here about when our next meeting should take place. Um, you know, I think in, in terms of a data point from you, how long is it going to take you to complete the needs assessment on both sides? So Courthouse, uh, Carl and I were talking during the tour about looking at next Friday to have a follow-up meeting where we can show the numbers behind the the numbers and, and talk about those a little more and make sure those are correct. Um, some tweaks, well, we'll have to set up a, a meeting with the sheriff as well to go over uh, that 5,500 square feet that we're looking at here. So um, my guess is uh, two or three weeks this piece is done. On the court side? Yep. Okay, so two and or I was three gonna, weeks on the court side. And then what about the admin piece? John, John and I were going to talk uh, tonight or tomorrow about scheduling that first meeting, and we were planning to come down for a a day and just uh, tackle all of the department head meetings in, in one day. So we're, we're anticipating, uh, we've got some work to do to be prepared for that meeting or those meetings. We'd come down for a day and have those, those discussions. We'd go back and put that stuff into a spreadsheet and quantify the things that we heard and distribute meeting minutes, uh, come back down and have a, a shorter uh, confirmation meeting with each of the department heads for a second time and then that is done too. So. Uh, it sort of depends on ability to schedule meetings, okay. but it, it could be three, four, five weeks. It shouldn't take us long. Okay. And so what I'll throw out there for consumption, especially by the judges, is um, in terms of planning the next meeting here, would it work on the UJS side of things 
to plan our next meeting for, I'll just throw this out there, a month from now. Is that appropriate, doable? Would it be better to wait until your piece is complete, say six weeks? Do you think you could be done in three to five? Um, if we met, if we met in a month, I'm, I, I know we'd have the courthouse side done and we'd have sort of similar preliminary numbers on the admin side. So it's just whether we get that meeting in to, to reaffirm with the department head. So if, if you wanted to make sure everything was done, six weeks would probably be appropriate. Okay. If, if you want to keep things going, four weeks we'd have courthouse side done and admin side to the same level, to the same level of what we've got the courthouse now. Just what I'm tentatively thinking, I'll throw it out there for discussion is we could do our next meeting regarding the courthouse, the judicial side, and then UJS would have uh, a month or so to bring to the table whatever presentation they would like to, uh, justifying, quantifying, I think is a more appropriate term, their needs request. And, and they can des describe in detail to the public what they want to as to why they think they need the square footage they do. And, and then we could have a meeting just dedicated to the UJS and the judicial side. And then we could do a third follow-on meeting at least regarding the administrative side later on down the road. I'm just throwing that out there for consideration, see what you all think. I like that idea simply because then we're not going to get completely overloaded at any one meeting. Right. Okay. Well, we'll have Bill and his office work with everybody offline. We're not all going to sit here on our phones right now and try to figure out the dates, but we'll have his office work with the judges and uh, then the rest of us to figure out what dates are appropriate then if there's no objection to that. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Well, uh, we're at about 9.02 right now. I know we've got uh, some more stuff on our agenda here, but again, we're flexible. Everybody has families, and I appreciate the time that everybody's putting into this. I know we've got some discussion about courthouse improvement, but, uh, you know, that was just kind of left to be open-ended and flexible. Uh, I got to be honest with you, I didn't anticipate it taking about 90 minutes to get through the courthouse, but we did. We did it. Got all the committee members up to speed. I think what I'll do, if there's no objection, is, uh, you know, we'll take some public comment, and I think it's just all members here for the most part. So I guess, does anybody have anything they just want to get out right now and talk about for the good of the order? You know, is uh, structurally, do you want to know how this is going to proceed? Timing, dates, uh, how we're going to move forward, questions right now? Or is there a silent consensus that uh, the next thing we should do is let Andrew finish the needs assessment on the courthouse side and then invite uh, UJS and, and the judges to come in and their staff to talk about why they have the needs that they do? Can I say right up front, thank you for doing this and thank you for making it public and just, I mean, the transparency is awesome and I thank you for that, all of you. Well, Betty, Commissioner Schmidt, thank you. Commissioner Schmidt said at the beginning, and this is a serious uh, undertaking. We're going to get into the details uh, because it could pose a significant investment on the part of taxpayers and they anticipate and expect a certain level uh, a high level in this county of uh, details before we start to make these uh, public works investments. Joel, I'll echo, I think it would be uh, much more uh, better use of time if we did take one of these at a time and we gave whatever time it needs and to take the one that is most prepared and perhaps after that has been reviewed, uh, questions can come forward. And you better understand what the needs of the court are, because that's critical. So I think that uh, breaking those two in half and having that particular situation 
for meeting would be a much more productive and better utilization of our time. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you, and uh, we'll adjourn. <laughs>